Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. I want us to go and read the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. Verse 4. It says, However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. Verse 5. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Cephas, were, Cephas, sorry, John and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stand here before you whole. Verse 11. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation, that's verse 12, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this word today and thank you for revealing it unto us and thank you for your grace thank you for your anointing and your honor amongst us in jesus name amen hallelujah hallelujah let me start again by greeting you all in jesus mighty name hallelujah hallelujah thank you okay what we have just read we are hearing a story or let me say something that happened to Peter and John when they were going to the temple to go and pray. If you can go back to the last chapter, chapter 3, it will explain to you what happened so that they can be able to reach at the stage where we are reading. The Bible says this man went to the temple and on their way going into the temple, they met a lame man, Sogoli, seated at the gate or at the door that was called beautiful. And because they were going in, they were going in to pray or they were going in to worship. Hallelujah. But now, when they reached the place where that man was, the Bible says that man looked at them because all the time they will take him there so that he can go and ask for gifts, for alms. Maybe people will give him money, whatever they will give to him, it will be good for them. But that day, when that man went to the temple, he didn't know that he will never go back there again the same way as he used to go during other times and days. Hallelujah. Now, that man, when he saw Peter and John coming in. The Bible says he lifted up his eyes and looked at them expecting go and read chapter 3. 
expecting that something will come out of them. Maybe they will give him money or something. So now when this man reached there, this is what they told this man. Silver and gold we don't have. Silver le khauta renacho. But what we have, we are going to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So now, if you can look at that little story or the words that I've just spoken to you, it is telling us as children of God that there is something that we have that is better than silver and gold. You know, sometimes because we don't understand why Christianity or why we are Christians, we tend to fumble or fall along the way because we don't understand the things that we are having. I have entitled the message of today, the name Jesus. The name Jesus. And if you can also write in brackets, ask yourself, what name am I calling? Which name are you calling? These people, when they went there, when they reached there, they said to this man, we don't have silver. We don't have gold as you are seeing us. Maybe they were trying even to explain that we don't even work. There is nothing that we are doing for a living. But there is one thing that is so special that we can give unto you today. The thing that is so special is the thing that Jesus came and left us with. And this thing that Jesus has given unto us is more powerful than the things of the world that the people are possessing today. What they have been given by their Lord was more powerful by, than, better than the thoughts that the people were having at that time. These men people were enjoying, I will tell you why I say enjoying. They were enjoying to see him each and every day seated by the temple begging for arms each and every day. Now, after John and Peter has prayed for this man and said, in the name of Jesus, rise up, stand up, and walk. And that man jumped up and stand up and walked. The Bible says, if you, if you can just start where we have read, many people started believing. But this man, they just spoke about the name called Jesus. And this man stood up and started working. The Bible says, Munao, this man, it was long he's been coming to the temple, seated. Where we have read the Bible says, the high priest, they were even called by their names, they were always coming and passing that man by the gate. Are you hearing me? These men were always being passed by high priests who are called by big and gigantic names, who were called by status and whatever and whatever. But whatever they were having was not making this man to stand up. You can be called, I'm sorry, you can be called a pastor, an apostle, deacon, bishop, what else? Teacher, prophet, I'm sorry. Whatever. But if this, that you have, the name, whatever, that uh, uh, inscription that you have, like me, they love to call me Pastor Eunice. Okay? Dr. Eunice. But if this doctor, pastor, prophetess, Apostolus Eunice does not have the name Jesus, it does not mean anything. Because each and every day we are passing people by Banaba Papa, Baba Kulang, Baba Lualang, and are really still Why? Because we don't have the name Jesus. In other words, there is something that is so beautiful and wonderful about the name Jesus. Ukapulusha, you can be saved for 10 good full years, going to church each and every day. But because you are not acknowledging the power that is in the name of Jesus, you will just remain the same. Look at 
these two men that came and say, we don't have silver, we don't have gold, we don't have anything that we can give to you to satisfy what we need, but what we can give you in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And when you read nicely, the Bible says, the high priests were always... These men were not, were not always coming to the temple. This Peter and this John. This was their day to go into the temple. In the ninth hour. Why? Because they wanted to go there and worship and pray. So now they are priests. Who are always in the church. On Wednesday you are here. Friday you are here. Monday you are here. Saturday you are here. Sunday you are here. But nothing is happening. Are you hearing me? So now our salvation these days has tend to be an issue, a matter of talking, not a matter of power. Now, after the story of the man being raised and started walking, the Bible says they searched for this man. Remember, these are high priests were people who were taking care of what? Of the temple of the Lord. Now they searched for this man they got hold of them. Baba Tswara. their reason was they wanted to ask them, what power are you using? What is it that enabled you to pray for this man? And he was able to stand up because we've been giving offerings for such a long time and nothing is happening. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Now the Bible says, when they reached there, these men, they were caught. Now they went there, those high priests, they sat down with them. They wanted to integrate them. They wanted to ask them. They wanted to know their secret. Can you ask the person that is close to you, what is your secret? Because we are Kaabona, according to them, there was something that these guys were using. They cannot just speak with a person and the person stand up. The name Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you can go and read there in verse 7, I've just read it. They said, by what power? They called them to integrate them, to ask them. By what power are you able to do all these things? Why were you able to make this man to stand? Why this thing has happened as we know that this man is long. He's been seated here by the gate asking for gifts and alms from the people. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now the Bible says in verse 10, Peter answered and it says he was filled by the Holy Spirit. He answered at them and said to them, let it be known to you guys. Let it be known that Jesus, who came here and you, high priest, you killed him, crucified him, and God raised him up on the third day. On the, on the third day. That same Jesus you have killed is the same Jesus that is making us to be able to do what we are doing right now. It is not because of any other kind of power. It is not because of charm. It is not because you went to whom, whom, which doctor. Mm -mm. It is not because I've read so many books. Mm -mm. But these priests were able to recognize. That is why when they asked them, they said, by which power? Because number one, you don't even know the law. Number two, we were reading, you have never read. Number three, we've been sacrificing for a very long time. You have never been here. What is it that is making you to be able to make this man? In other words, Peter and John placed a challenge in the anointing of high priests. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. There was a challenge that Peter and John placed in the crawl, in the circle of the high priest. 
Because now these men, when they were coming, you will hear somewhere in the Bible, they will say, make way, make way, the high priests are coming. Everybody must be afraid of them. But these two men, they came and did something that was above human understanding and make a lame man to walk. Now they've challenged the authority that is upon them. Hallelujah. Can you tell somebody that is close to you, when you have the name Jesus, you challenge the authority of the person that is saying he or she is above you. That is why overnight, when I am going to Now, are you understanding? If you are a real Christian like me, you have a lot of enemies. Do you know why? Because always, even though you are not speaking, you are challenging the authority that they have. Hmm? You make them fear even when you are not talking. You make them tremble even though you are not saying anything. So now people all the time will come and say and cry. We don't understand why this and this are happening to us. Let me explain and tell you today so that you can have an answer. They are trembling because of the name that you are having in you. The minute they saw you, why? Because of the name Jesus that is in you. You don't need to have any other supernatural power. You don't need to have any other thing that is amazing. The only thing that you need as a child of God is the name Jesus. Now when we read, in verse 11, Peter said to them, the stone that you have rejected has now became a cornerstone of the temple. When Jesus came, he came to die for us, isn't it? And by Jesus, now we are called Christians. I don't know what others are believing in, but this is what I believe in. Why do I say so? Since I met Jesus, I saw Jesus doing great and mighty things in my life. Hmm? For you to be able to follow the name Jesus is when you have experienced something supernatural about the name Jesus. Okay. Look at this man. I want you to, to, to just take you a little bit backward a little bit so that we can come and we have the same understanding and we stand on the same note, isn't it? This man who was lame and pollution to our was When they reached there, Azanga He didn't even look at if they are educated or not. Okay? But when when they reached there, he did the same thing that he is doing each and every day. He looked at them and put out his hand. He wanted to receive. Now, when this man stood and looked at him, I believe they were touched in the heart. Because the Bible says he was expecting. Can you ask the person that is close to you, what are you expecting? Many a times we Christians, we fail because we don't have expectation. Hmm? We don't have what? Now, when you go to the house of the Lord each and every day, you must go with the expectation. Each and every day when you wake up in the morning, when they bath him or they bath him, I don't know, they help him to dress up, they help him to eat, they help him to do whatever he's supposed to do, and they pick him up, they go to, with him to the gate of the temple. When they place him there, he was only having one thing in mind, expectation. 
One day is one day. Somebody is going to give me money and I'm going to go home and buy crunches or buy myself a wheelchair and I will no longer come here being carried by people. One day, it's one day, somebody will come here. He's going to give me money and I'm going to do one, two, three for myself. One day, it's one day, somebody will come here and give me something that is going to change my life for the best. The problem that we have, when we go to the house of the Lord, we no longer have expectation. Can you tell the person that is close to you, expectation? What is expectation? When you go to the house of the Lord, you say today, Father, I'm going. I know that when I come back, that money I'm searching for, I'll be having it. It does not go kauri. I'm sorry. It does not go kauri. I will pray for you or not. The issue is you are expecting it. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Expect something. You cannot get what you are not expecting. Now when we go to the house of the Lord, this is what we do. We want hands to be laid on us. Now, in other words, this thing is teaching us as children of God. I want us to learn something and have a different perspective. When I am in the house of the Lord and the servant of the Lord is standing there and say, you are getting your money in Jesus' name. Because I have been expecting that this thing is going to happen to me. I believe that no maganjan is going to happen to me. When the servant of the Lord stood there, because I know I was sick for a very long time, when he says you are healed in Jesus' name, yes, because I've been expecting this healing for two days, I believe that I am healed in Jesus' name. If the servant of the Lord stood there and say, you have breakthrough in Jesus' name. It's long I've been searching for breakthrough and today it has been spoken. It means my breakthrough has come. I receive it. I have it in Jesus' name. This man, when they told him, stand up, Azanga Tomeari, Kinale Mingwa, Mama, Kale, let's worry, Kubule Merkung Ning, Kinale ten years ago, Sabiri. Eh, eh, you have your job in Jesus' name. Yeah. This man, when they told him the message, the Bible does not speak anywhere that he started explaining. We today, Christians of today, we have a lot of explaining that we do. Can you ask the person that is close to you? Are you not the same as others? Are you not giving a lot of explanations, even those that are not needed? Even those that are not needed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I love verse 12. Let me read verse 12 again for you. In chapter 4. It says, Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Pela, this man was explaining this thing to the highest priests. Am I right? Now, when he was explaining these words to the high priests, he was explaining things to people who knows the Bible. When we speak of the terms of today, we are speaking of people who have read the law of Moses, eh? the book of the prophets. They know everything about everything that is written in the Bible. So now when this Peter come, this small boy, and tell them, there is no other name that we have been given except the name of Jesus Christ that we can be saved with. It makes this man to be very furious. Why? Because there is something that they believe in. There is something that they know can work 
better than what these men are talking about. Remember, when they killed Jesus, they were thinking they were eliminating him. They were finishing up with him. The gospel of Jesus will never be known. They never knew that, that by killing Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they are laying a foundation of the name Jesus to work in each and every person's life who has expectation, who believes in the name, who believes that God has sent him to earth, who believes that he has risen from the dead, who believes that now he reigneth with God in heaven, and a person who believes that now he is interceding for us. That is why when you believe on all those things that I'm speaking about, when you say in the name of Jesus, something must happen. Are you hearing me? Can you tell the person that is close to you, believe in the name of Jesus. Okay. Peter was explaining and explaining. Now, there is something that I want us to read in verse 14. Can we read it? After they spoke and remember, I said to you, when you have the name Jesus, that is why you will have a lot of what? Enemies. I'm sorry to challenge you, but let me challenge you a little bit. Can you ask the person that is close to you, how many enemies do you have? Liria Lefetule, say, answer me. Others we are saved, we don't even have one enemy. When the time of grooving comes, you are found there. When the time of going out comes, you are found there. When the time of going and knock it down, I don't even know what knocking it down is. You are found there. But when you have the name Jesus, you must have a lot of enemies. Peter and John started to have their enemy. Their first enemy was demons and whatsoever, but the enemy on earth was the high priest. Now, because these men felt that they've been challenged, they made sure that they must get a hold of these men and catch them and imprison them. Everything that these people were doing, they were trying to close down the name Jesus. Are you hearing me? Now in verse 14 it says, let me read for you. Verse 14. It says, and seeing the men who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Can you ask the person that is, what is it that you have that can make the enemy not to say anything? This man, they've healed a layman. And now, Kausan, this thing is obvious. And Christians don't do these things. Kausan, they were going there to the council with the chiefs, the chief priests and everyone to be asked questions and whatever and whatever. Now, when they reached there, they were interrogating them, asking, by what power? Why have you done this? And Peter was answering, the same Jesus whom you killed has become now the same Jesus who is making us to be able to do what we are doing. Utatashu. Now, these people were unable to condemn Peter and John. Why? Because the testimony was standing there. Are you hearing me? Now, Rina Bapoloswa, today we are fallen. Kausani, Rewiela Midirong Yarena. And then, how Polo Yela is Sipila. It is not the church, it's you. This man is healed. This man can now walk. And this man knew that these people, 
The high priests have taken them away. And now they are going to interrogate them and ask them questions. He said to himself, yes, I was healed. I must avail myself. He went there and stood with others. If now he was not there, they might say, the man that you have prayed for yesterday is now lame again. Nothing happened to him. What is it you were trying to do? We told you never to mention this name Jesus again. But now the problem that they were having is that the, the testimony was standing there in the midst of people. If now they can say something that is different, that man is going to say, uh-uh. Now these people have prayed for me, I can walk. Aren't you happy that I can now walk? Aren't you happy that I can now go and market a job for my family? Aren't you happy that now I can go on and tell some other people that there is Jesus that is alive? Aren't you happy that right now I can walk like other people and do things like what other people are doing? It's like you are angry because I've been healed. The problem was the high priest's authority was challenged. Hallelujah. Now today I want to tell you as a child of God, when you have the name Jesus, you must know that you must challenge the kingdom of darkness. Your Christianity will never be a Christianity when the name Jesus is not challenging the devil that is next to you. When the name Jesus that you have is not challenging the friends that you have. I said, "Wow, na limora na Jesusi, utunjo tama ya mitsa ma yoyasi utana limitsa ma yoyaba tubaba." The way you do things must never be the same as the way they are doing their things. Why? Because there is Jesus Christ in you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you have Jesus in your life? Is Jesus there in your life? Is Jesus reigning in your life? Is he working in your life? If the name Jesus is working in your life, you will never allow this name to fail in your life. They can criticize you. They can talk bad about you. They can do whatever they're doing to you. But because you know I have a name that is powerful than any other name. And I know in the name of Jesus, hey, the Bible says every knee must bow. All knees that are in heaven and down on earth and underneath, they must bow down. Why? Because of the name of Jesus. How terribly be so number and adjust so umuloi wo fita baloi ka ufela. When you have the name Jesus, you are the best witch that has ever been seen. Because now, whatever you do or whatever words you speak, there is something that made these words to manifest. Okay, the Bible said, where we have already said, but people that were saved that same day, that that man stood up, were more than 500 men, about 500 men. Ladies were not counted. Okay? Now it means there were a lot of people. That is why the chief priests, they were not happy. Because now people are standing, and those that have seen, the men standing, it's sure that they are going to tell the next person, hey, awai wona ntori iboni. Na asi kote mpele. Uya mziba, eh, 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 Andris. No, I don't mean my son-in-law. Uya mziba Andris. Hara Andris ufi. Ola wa udula kote mpele nkumunyako. Eh, kia mziba, hey. Do you know what happened today? They came these two guys. They came these two guys, you know. These two guys, you know, they were entering the temple. And these two guys, Mali Wodi, when they reached there, they So Munaola Andrisinal, Atukambam Karawao. Munaola Andrisinal, Vilechi, Anana Uri, Patamuzam. Nkerabula Kauzam. Patamuzam. So when you follow Jesus, you must be stupid. So 
Chana haba fita mola muna ah. Ndri dee ching mola na asa nga keyboard. Haba na haba fita mola. Muna ola wule la lebo na uncha li zo ure at least. Pamo fe samle. Malodi. Awabo na silo wen. This was the problem of the devil and the high priest. Malodi awabo na silo. Eh, hudi ayi ape mali ulile na unyoko ukwa. Hudi ayi chi. Eh, wena. Those men, when they reached there, he took out his hands. He wanted to accept something, a gift from them. Those men, they just stood there and looked at him and say, money we don't have. Silver, gold, we don't have. They didn't even hear what these men said. Gold, silver, we don't have. What we can give you, we are giving to you. In the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. Now, when that man stood up, for me, even though I have cancer, it's a miracle. For that one, even though he has sugar diabetes, it's a miracle. For that one, even if the person is HIV positive, it's a miracle. Now, because all of us, we have seen it by our eyes. What is it that we have to do? Believe in the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We fail the name Jesus because we don't believe. I once said when we were in the church, Christianity is not a religion. It's a lifestyle. When you become born again, you don't live like everybody. You live the kind of life that you are supposed to live. You talk the way you are supposed to talk according to the word of God. Mm -mm. When you want to speak, you calculate first. If now I can just speak like I'm crazy, what is it that these people are going to say? That is why when you want to speak, the Bible says, you count your words, you don't just open, and you flow like a river. You count them, and you said, mm -mm, this one I cannot say. That is why when you are a Christian, even though you have a lot, hundred enemies, you can just keep quiet and don't answer them and don't answer what they are saying. Why? Because you know that there is something that is inside of you that is called the name Jesus. And the Bible says in the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Every knee and tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But now, us as Christians, we are failing the name Jesus because we don't want to confide ourselves and conform ourselves to the things that made us to be able to use the name Jesus. Today, what our ringes are Now, if really indeed you have the name of Jesus, some, something comes and fill you up. That is why you see people doing things that they've never done before. Why? Because there is something who came and overfilled and overshadowed them. When they speak the name Jesus, something in the spirit must happen. When they proclaim the name Jesus, something in the spirit must happen. But you have to confide and conform your lifestyle with the name Jesus. It does not just happen. It happens because you are conforming to the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you have the name Jesus? I want to challenge your faith today. It's long we have been praying. Mm -hmm. It's long we have been fasting. Thank you. Is it true what I'm saying? 
As long as we've been quoting the verses, can we go and check our lives? Hmm? This man, this layman, I'm drilling a little bit because I want you to understand. This layman, Nadu Chimola, Lee Nali Mueza Dibi, Anai Sabule Lisilon. The thing that will speak was that if after he got his salvation and the healing, if he went back to his old ways. But this one didn't go back to his old ways. He came and started working with the apostles. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now let us read again in Acts chapter 10 verse 43. I want to finish. I don't want to speak too much today. Some of the verses I'll just give you, you'll go and read them at home. It's Peter again in Cornelius' house, verse 43. This is the answer to the high priests. Are you there? When Peter was in Cornelius' house, he said, to him all the prophets witnessed that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. This man, the prophets of old, spoke about him. Isaiah, Jeremiah, whatever. They spoke about this man, Jesus. Now Peter here was explaining this man, Jesus. The prophets of old have spoken about this day. They've spoken that this thing is going to happen this time. Why? Because in the root of David, a savior is going to be born. And this savior will make us to do impossible. The things that are impossible in the eyes of men are going to start to be possible. Now these things, because it has been prophesied a long time ago, and those days when those prophecies were coming, they were still living under the law. Hallelujah. These people were still living under what? Under the law. Jesus has not yet come. They were living according to the law of Moses. The laws that has been given and written in the word. The scripts that have been written so that they follow them. That is why all the time they have to go and make sacrifices for the atonement of their sins. Now Jesus came as the prophet has said. And when he came, when he died, he made a signature. This signature was saying to everyone who's going to believe in me, I am giving him or her authority to do the impossible. Hallelujah. When you have the name Jesus, you don't do the impossible because you are a pastor. Hmm? Pastors are just sent and anointed more than you so that they can reveal secrets of the word. Are you understanding me? So in other, other ways, when you receive Christ, when you receive the remission of sin, when Christ has died for you, he took away all of your sin. The Bible says, when you believe and believe, the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. And when the Holy Spirit has filled you, when you start to say, in the name of Jesus, foundations must shake. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that how many foundations has shaken when you say in the name of Jesus? Whoever believes in Jesus. Can you ask the person that do you believe? Do you believe? 
You must believe. You must be sort of sitai lanyan. And nabo tai la bobo ngata juan. Aole sitai la samudi mudi ntoka fela di zama ya vuti. Hmm. This man Jesus was prophesied by the prophets. In other words, we are not lost. Let me speak it again. We are not lost. We are speaking about something that has been prophesied a long time ago. And now it's a reality in our eyes. And we are seeing it each and every day. If you are not seeing it, go and check your footsteps and the things that you are doing. That is why in the beginning I said you will hear people say, Go charis re a rapel laudialis. Now, now, the age is a scene. What tatakewen? Can you tell the person that is close to you? What tatakewen? Ankelis Sukeli again. Okay. I have been here for a long time, like others. And God is doing things in my life. When I wake up in the morning, I said it one day in the church. I said, when I wake up in the morning, I say, God, thank you. I'm still alive. Because I don't know what happened when I was sleeping. I just hear that others will sleep and they never woke up in the morning. But I was able to wake up. Father, thank you. Can you ask the person that, what is it that made you to rise up today in the morning? Literally, fit to let and I ask, please answer me. Come tell me, Tomo, where you have set your alarm to make you wake up six o'clock. How sa set alarm? When you didn't set your alarm, you just said when you are still sleeping. Matano vule. Eh? O karna kwe into age. Kerabu ya merigo. It's like time is gone. Hey, what's happening? And you search for a watch. You say, hey, I'm late. But ask yourself, what is it that made you, Master Claude, to wake up in the morning? I believe this is the thing that was making, was supposed to be making us to believe more in God. Because we don't even know what makes us to rise in the morning. Some have slept, even now they cannot wake up. But because of the grace of God that God has given you, you are awake and you are still speaking and you are still walking and you are going on lying again. But God has given you this beautiful grace today so that you can testify about his goodness. The job that we have as children of God, let us testify about Jesus of Nazareth. Gone are those days that we had, there is a crusade where, 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 where an evangelist is evangelizing, telling people Jesus is coming back. The things that we are having this time, I'm sorry, there is one on one, calm, I will tell you your name. I know my name, I'm Chirizi. I will tell you, yeah, I was born in 1970 now. I will tell you your mother's name. My mother is dead and I buried her myself. I saw her. And your mother was killed by sugar diabetes. Yes, now. She was old. But we prayed for her and prayed and prayed. God agreed she went. And she died. Hmm? Huh? And I know where she is. If now you can tell me, go to your, I will run. I know, at home in Venda. So what we want to hear these days, huh? and after that, when you have been told, this is the challenge, I'm not saying it's wrong. This is the challenge. After you have been told, you don't go and say, Father, have mercy on me. When I out to a mow your robala malala te kali tolo lau baba. And a little lela ali safola. Anointing does not work hand in hand with sin. 
I'm telling the truth. You cannot be prayed for right now here and we pray for you. We tired, uh, made ourselves tired by praying for all of you here. And we pray for all of you. After finishing, you go back to your deeds. And you expect the anointing to work in you. Never. Are you hearing me? Now when you have or when you want the name Jesus to work in your life, make a decision today. When you want this name, this anointing of God to work in your life, you make a total turnaround of life. You change the way you were doing things. You change the way you were speaking. You change the way you were going on and on in your everyday life. You change everything about you. If you think these things that not suit my Christian, you leave them. Oh, anointing will work in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is, is anointing working in your life? In the book of Galatians 3, verse 22. We need to know why the anointing, the name Jesus, is not working in our lives. We need to, need to take out all that is making us not to be able. You will go and read it on Galatians 4. Or can I read it for you? Maybe it will increase our understanding. I want us to understand. Can you ask the person that is close to you, is the name Jesus working? In your life, is the We are trying to speak the truth here. In the book of Galatians chapter 3, let us read verse 22. I want you to hear this. But the scripture has confirmed, confined all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ must be given to those who believe. People have been confined by sin or taken away by sin. But the Bible is saying the promise of God will only be visible when we have faith in Jesus. And then we believe in him, then blessings will come to us. That's what I was telling you. Verse 24 says, Therefore, the law was our tutor. These are high priests. To bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under the law or under the tutor. Before we knew the Lord Jesus, we were living under the law. We were not born again. We were not believing in Christ. And the sin has caged us in. In a house of apostle, pastor, bishop, whatever. If you don't give your life to Jesus one day, you are still caged by sin. So now when you give your life to Jesus and you believe in the Lord Jesus, now those blessings that have been promised, they start to be revealed in your life. That is why I said in the beginning, if you can be prayed for today and you go back to live the life you were living yesterday or day before yesterday it's no use for you the prayer that you have received that is why you will see in our midst most of the time somebody will be prayed for here and say i am healed thank god i am healed and after that, we say, 
the name of Jesus is not working. It is us who are making the name of Jesus that people don't recognize that it works. Why? Because when we have found the grace, it is us again who go back to our past life and the grace that we have found go back to its owner. Hmm? When you have found the grace, God gives you the grace to live, to be healed or whatever. And then after that grace, when you go back to whatever that you were doing, that nobody knows, the grace run away because great and sin don't stay in one place. The grace run away back to its owner. Now, well, fine. Let me give an example. You have been prayed for, tender, in the house of the Lord. And you went back to your doing. Nobody didn't show you. And there is nothing visible here on you that shows that you went back to your own ways. Okay. Now, Andres gave you a prophecy and said, this time next year, I'm sorry, my girl, you'll be carrying a baby girl. Now, because you ran away to your past life, this time next year, prophecy Yes, it ran. What do we say? Our pastor is a liar. Mm -mm. Are you understanding me? The pastor is not a liar. The liar is the one who, gave, who accepted the prophecy. Because after accepting it, she went back to her own ways and she expected that grace to go with her. When you go your own way, the grace go back to the owner. And then the next year, Nartabara Wujimato, opening our eyes, we want to see what is going to happen. And nothing happens. And then we turn and lie and say, it is because in charis people are being prayed for and things are not, they are happening. Ask me, I will tell you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The issue is we want the grace to stay where there is sin. And grace can never stay where sin is. So if you go back to your old ways, grace runs away. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you understand that grace does not intermingle with sin? If I unusually, and started doing the things that I want to do, grace moves. Yantor kitsiba de vesejo. Yatamaya. Yatua. Mara hakita kasonta. Kita no dibulela de ves. Are you hearing me? I will go on preaching the word now. It's long I've been reading the Bible. And I go on preaching. But somewhere, somehow, ah, when days are going by, you will start hearing, to toya mice and I'll try. Something is not right. Why? Grace have departed. So now when you have the grace, when you know about the name Jesus, you have to take care of the name of the Lord that is working in your life. The minute you went away from the calling of God, the grace of God leaves you immediately. And when it leaves you, only the mouth is left speaking. I, in my days, when I stood up, when I heard the mic, demons will scream. Why are they not screaming these days? I, in my days, when I was seeing there standing, there was no worshiper who will stand with me and say, then what happened to you today, Mamzu? I, in my day, are you hearing what I'm trying to say? Even if yesterday you were prophes prophesying, but today because you have fallen, you will never prophesy the way you were prophesying yesterday. Those who are filled with the spirit will be able to recognize, mm, Maliwadi, something is not right. Malin, we are short. 
Something has went away. But because of the grace of the Lord, we believe that when we go back to him, he forgives us again and we go back and we work again according to his grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to finish. I understand you understand that we have been given a name by grace. The name Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This name Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Can we read it? By Philippi. Philippians 2. Are you there? You are there? Can I read? Philippians chapter 2. We read verse 9 up to verse 11. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him, him, Jesus, and given him the name which is above every name. Can you tell somebody that is close to you, the name Jesus is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. Let me read it again. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven on top and of those on earth those we are living with and of those under earth those that are under the soil. And 11 says, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Bible says God has exalted this Jesus. Now, when Jesus died and he went away, God exalted him. Now he gave those that believes in him the authority to use the name of Jesus. Now those who have the authority to use the name of Jesus, the Bible says, at the mention of this name, can you tell the person that is close to you, at the mention of this name, the name Jesus, every knee shall bow. Tell somebody, I'm not saying speak alone. Tell the person that is so, every knee should bow. Every knee that is in heaven. Every knee that is on earth. And every knee that is under the earth. Orao rijaka aramets in the waters, under the ground, wherever and wherever, on top of the mountains, and wherever they must bow. When we mention the name Jesus. And it says again, every tongue must confess. That Jesus is Lord. Why? Because God has exalted him. Now when he exalts him, he gave us the authority to use his name. And when we start using his name, something must happen in the natural. Something must happen in the supernatural. Something must happen in the waters. Something must happen under the ground. Why? Because Jesus has already been exalted. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now when we are Christians, we have the name Jesus. You have the name Jesus. You cannot be troubled by diseases like this when you have the name Jesus. You cannot be troubled by demons like this when you have the name Jesus. 
You cannot be troubled by all these kind of problems when you have the name Jesus. Because the Bible is saying by the mentioning of this name. And what I conclude and what I was thinking is, it means we Christians, we are not using the name of Jesus. I'm not saying those that are doing so are wrong. I usually hear people saying, God of Elijah, send down fire. Uh -uh. In the name of Jesus, fire must come down. Uh -uh. The Bible says we were ruled by the law. Elijah was ruled by the law now. Hmm? Then Jesus came. We are not longer under the law. We are freeborn. We are able to use the name of Jesus. So now, if you can say in the name of Jesus, something must happen. Now, when you are asleep at home, you just find that there is something that is coming upon you, heart telling you, pressing you down. And nothing ever, let me tell you a secret. It is not that the mouth is uttering in Jesus' name. Even if the heart is uttering in Jesus' name, something must happen. Because everything here is supernatural. It is according to the spirit. Now when we are children of God, when we mention the name Jesus, something but happened. So today I want me and you to call, go and tell the kingdom of the devil that is disturbing and ruling upon our lives. In the name of Jesus, we are tired of you. You have to leave us alone. From today, we are going to live according to the plan of God. Whatever we meet along the road in the name of Jesus, whatever we do in the name of Jesus, whatever I say in the name of Jesus, whatever I want to be done in the name of Jesus, it shall be done. Why? Because we have been given a name that is above any name that you know, above any prophet that you know, above any apostle that you know, above any chief priest that you know. The name Jesus reigns supreme supreme upon our lives. The problem we don't recognize we have been given a name. Sometimes when we wake up in the morning, I don't know if it does happen to other pastors. In me, it does happen. You will feel the body is so heavy. I have to go and stand on the pulpit. This is what I do. Wake up. Go to my bathroom, my bath. I dress up. I said, Devin, my husband bought me a car. I'm going to drive in Jesus. My children know I'm going to drive in Jesus' name. I take my key. I go out. I start my car. I come to church. This is what I have learned. I'm telling you other pastors. Immediately I enter that door. Those things, all of them, <laughs> gone. Now our problem is, how go Karuna Hey, I call. One day I said to my husband, the day I will move out there to be a worshiper is the day God told me to buzz off, I will go. If he has not yet, I know. I'm doing what God has told me. Isn't it? Now when you are doing what God has told you, you don't look at the circumstances and things that are happening close to you. What you have to do is to say, today, no makanjani, I'm standing up, I'm going to the house of the Lord, and I'm going to do what I do best, and I'm going to do more. Why? Because the anointing of the Lord is growing in my life. The name of Jesus is working in my life. That is why today I'm different. I'm not the same as yesterday. Why? Because the name of Jesus is always penal beating you. Amen. Talkings only. I went to the church. Mama never looked at me. I'm busy, but I cannot look at you, all of you. Huh? I went to the church and you know, Mama was busy, you know, with these things of hers, you know. You know now, eh, eh, when you come to the house of the Lord, come for the Lord and not for Mama. Yeah. And when you are here for the Lord, the Lord is the one who is going to take care of what you are crying for. Yeah. 
And when the Lord takes care of what you're craving, there is joy unspeakable in your heart. Things are never the same. As things are being done by people, I cannot satisfy you for long. Yes, I will try to satisfy you, but not for long. And I will get tired. And then when I get tired, what will happen to you? I'm a person now. I must be tired somewhere, somehow. But now, if you have the name Jesus, this is what I teach ladies. I said to them, if you know you are a mother, you are a wife, you must have your own corner of cornerizing the devil. Hmm? When the devil thinks he has you, how are you? When the devil terrorizes you, you just say, mm. keep quiet. And the devil terrorizes and terrorizes and speak and speak and speak. And when your time comes, you go to that corner. You kneel down. You say, Papa, you saw them. If you leave me, they are going to laugh. And they're not laughing at me. They're laughing at you. Now, God, you must do something for me now. Because if you leave me like this, when they laugh, they're not laughing at me. They are saying, my God is not able so, Father, can you rise up and be visible? Because I want these people to know that you are indeed a true God. And when you start doing that, God will never leave you. Sicknesses are always there. Tough times are always there. It does not mean that when we are born again, we don't meet things. Yes, we do meet them. But do you recognize the name that you have been given? This name, the chief priest says, what kind of power? It means now, this name has power. Hmm? Can you tell the person that is close to you, the name has power. And this name is able to do the impossible. What is it that is impossible in your life? I cannot tell it. This name can give you money. Okay. It can give you busha at home. When you reach at home, before you start thinking about cooking, what was the need of cooking? Let me go and sleep. And you went on and sleep. Why? Because you are full. God has given you food. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? Hallelujah. Now, the only thing that is left in us, I want to finish, children of God. Let us recognize the name that God has given unto us. Let us recognize that there is power in the name of Jesus. And let us recognize that the word of the Lord says, when we mention the name, at the mention of this name, things must start happening. In our everyday lives, we are seeing things happening, but they are not happening according to the name of Jesus are happening according to our own wisdom and our own thinking. This is the time for you and me to stand up and rise up and tell ourselves that in Jesus' name, things must bow in Jesus' name. Demons must run away in Jesus' name. There is a verse that I've read today in the morning. So I believe it's found in Mark chapter 10 verse 47. I'm finishing. Mark chapter 10 verse 47. We are reading about a man. He said, Son of David, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Can you tell the person that is close to you, Son of David, have mercy on me. Let's just read it in passing. I want to close. Verse 47. Oh. 
Let's read from 46. I will just read it quickly. It says, Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, blind Baratimius, the son of Timius, sat by the roadside. In other words, Jesus was going out and there was a great multitude that was going with him. Somebody was blind. They call him Bartimius, son of Timius. And when he heard, can you tell the person that is close to your head? This man cannot see. That it was Jesus of Nazareth he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many, like me and you, started warning him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then the ones that were saying, Wara Samun, you are making noise. This man is a very anointed prophet. You don't have to shout. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer now. Rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Let us close our Bibles. This is a story of a blind man. This man was blind. He cannot see. But the Bible says he heard. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Heard. Heard that there is something happening. There is a man of God who is passing. And this man of God is called Jesus of Nazareth. And this Jesus of Nazareth, he prays for people and they get well. I'm speaking about the same Jesus. Now this man, blind Bartimeo, when he heard people's talking, I believe they were just going up and down the road screaming and shouting, Jesus is coming. Hey, Jesus is coming. Hey, Jesus is coming. And maybe he grabbed one of the people and asked, who is this Jesus? And maybe somebody asked him, uh, answered him and said, haven't you heard? There is this prophet in town. They call him Jesus of Nazareth. He prays for people and they get healed. He does things that are amazing. Hmm? Is it true? Yes, it's true. How much do you know about this man Jesus? Maybe somebody started to explain. But merely when I was trained, I was where, 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 where this Jesus did this? I believe this man's faith started growing because of hearing only. Are you hearing me? The faith of this man started going up because hearing only. He was not seeing anything. He was hearing people talking. And the talking of people made his faith to go up. Now by the day he heard that the same Jesus is coming by the same road where he was seated. He said, my opportunity. Hmm? It's long I've been expecting this. Today I'm going to be made well. 
Now, because he was not seeing, when Jesus passed and when he hear that people now are talking and they're closer, he started screaming. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. No, 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 no. You don't do it this way. Hmm, which way must he do because he's not seeing? Hmm, you don't have to shout this way. Hmm? And uh, on top of that, you are blind now. And you are making noise. And this man, the respected man, you don't have to scream like this. The Bible says, when he had them discouraging him. Tell somebody that is close to discouragement. When he had them discouraging him. I love this thing. Ah. They are seeing, I'm not seeing. Even this Jesus, I've never seen him before. Themselves they are seeing, but I cannot see. Uh -uh. They know him and I don't even know him. I've never met him before. Now this is my chance to hear him talking to maybe something is going to happen into my life today. In other words, this blind Bartimaeus has got an expectation. He had an expectation that day. Now the Bible says when they were saying, cool, cool down, cool down. Don't shout. They are seeing. I'm not seeing. They are talking. I'm not even knowing what they are talking about. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Somebody like me say, Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. Remember, this person Jesus was moving with a crowd. It needs somebody who's shouting to get the attention of the man Jesus. Now when he was shouting, Jesus said, mm -mm, there is somebody shouting. And he said, who is calling? Eish. This is what we say now. I just bring him to me. Now the Bible says the same people, Ruth, those who were saying Warasa, are the ones that went to him and say, Cheer up. He's calling you. Stand up. The Bible says, Achia jas or ujasi or ulipai. Throw it down. And he ran to the Savior. When he reached the Jesus, I asked him again. Monok is fof. Yabonalata by your kiss fof, isn't it? What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, my eyes, I want to see. I just want to see. If I can see, I'll be the happiest person in my life. And Jesus said, let it be according to your faith. Why did Jesus speak about faith? This man showed that he believed in Jesus even though he was not seeing him. This man believed that Jesus can do something in his life even though he never heard him preaching one day. He just believed that the authority that Jesus has can also work in his life. And by that time when he started hearing that Jesus is coming this way, he started to have an expectation. Jesus must do something in my life today. Hallelujah. Now when he has shouted and shouted, when they call him and when he regained and got his sight, the Bible says he started following Jesus. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you following Jesus? 